I've been the operations and community rugby manager with Maris Deeston for 15 months now, um, but been in the club scene with them for oh, about 13 years, doing heaps of different volunteer roles with them. Um, I don't live and breathe rugby or sports, but I do live and breathe community and trying to bring communities together. Um, so when I first started in this role, I had no idea how to complete the funding application form. Um, I knew where to go for funding, but I didn't know what to expect um, with the applications or anything like that. And like a lot of you, I know how daunting um, applications can be. And every time you think that you've faced a really tough one, the next one comes along and you think, oh my gosh, the last one was a piece of cake. Um, so I'm not a scholar. Uh, I don't write compelling novels and I struggle at the best of times to find the right word to fit in an application. So I have had uh, plenty of knockbacks over the last 15 months, uh, but quickly learned not to take it personally. Uh, it did drag me down a couple of times when I sort of thought, oh man, we really needed that. Um, but just get back on the horse, so they say, and put that next application in. Um, funders are there to help and they actually want to give the money away. So don't be afraid to reach out to the funding advisors like Samantha and Carol have both said, it makes their life easy and it makes your life easier as well. Um, don't be afraid to ask the questions. Think big, have that positive mindset and do take a breath along the way and enjoy the view. Um, so we have within our club two documents. We have an events plan and a funding plan. So our events plan um, lists everything that we're going to be doing through the year. So you can see our school program, um, team photos, night ripper, et cetera. Um, having this implemented gives me an idea of what funding I may need to apply for during the year. And our uh, funding plan has a list of all the items that I might need. There's lots more down below, but I just took a screenshot of this part here. Um, the funders which are in our local area, uh, when the application date, I put submitted the application, the closing date for each of those um, trusts, if we've been granted or declined and when accountability is due and over here, uh, person responsible because my boss does uh, some of those applications as well. Um, so as you can see, they're nothing flash, just a simple table and a word document. Um, as Samantha and Carol also said, um, research is probably your biggest job to do right at the beginning. Research what funding options are available in your area. Um, but not only that, look at what they do fund and what they don't fund. Um, there's some links here, which I'm sure Sam can flick in chat as well or can send out to everyone later. So on Department of Internal Affairs, there's actually a list of um, societies that you can apply to. Um, which is where I have found some of my left field funders that, I mean, one was in Christchurch and we're in Auckland. So, you know, there are nationwide agencies out there that are willing to help as well. Um, Sport Auckland have a funding map on their website and that goes, shows you what's available in your local areas. And Sport NZ have an external funder um link that you can go on now I found this to be a little bit out of date in terms of closing dates and things like that but it gives you an idea of some of the funders that you can go to and then you jump onto the web their website and research you know what they have available and what they don't have available um and I saw a comment come through actually on the registrations um, about there's lots of places to apply to um, without information on where your best options are. 
So once you've done your research, um, you should know which funders are your best options to apply to for, for your specific needs. Um, but simply apply everywhere. Like I've put funding applications in here, there and everywhere in the hopes of, you know, one coming through. And I tend to apply to different trusts for um, different items or projects. So I might send one through to the council for Hit Shield um, because the club's grown so much this last year, we need more. Um, but then at the same time, I might put one through to grassroots for rugby balls. Um, so don't tend to send um, an application through to multiple multiple organisations for just the rugby balls or just the hit shields. Uh, so you know, what comes next? Get all your ducks in a row. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to give yourself plenty of time. Don't leave it until the closing date to send an application through because chances are you may have forgotten something and if it's held up because you haven't sent all your documents through or something like that, it can be deferred to the next round or it might even just be declined. So making sure you've got a list of all the documents you might need, so your affiliation letters, tax certificates, budgets, um, cover letters, etc., cetera, um, and your incorporated societies, charity commission certificates. Um, as Carol said, focus on your project, the who, what, where, when, why, um, and spell check. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a scholar, and uh, my spelling can be shocking at the best of times. So I tend to put everything into a Word document and use the editor um, and then copy and paste it back again. So that's, that's actually been a huge help uh, for me. Uh, keeping your answers short and sweet, but relevant to your project. Okay, so I um, saw a question coming through about gathering information um, to add into your uh, application. So regarding sort of like the schools and stuff like that. So back last year, we went for the Tumanawa Fund and it is part of that application getting the student voice. So easiest way was to send out a survey to some of the schools that we were already working with. Um, just got the teachers to ask the students, you know, simple questions. Um, I think you might be able to see down there how many students enjoy playing rugby, um, how many girls would be interested in sessions available just for them. Um, and just by show of hands, um, gathering a percentage putting it all into a simple graph like this and attaching it to your um, application. So, and moving on from that as well, finding stats from your local area to highlight the potential growth um, to get kids active and registration numbers, et cetera. Support letters from schools, community letters, and a survey your local communities, your membership databases. Um, and using social media and stuff for that as well. So there are, and, and just with that as well, um, there was the comment regarding that it can be quite hard not having the multi-year stuff with with the specific application. Um, and you know, that's something I need to look at for next year as well like where do we go to keep building on this program because we know it's successful you know 35 percent growth rate we've had this year in females from our girls um, rugby program in the schools so it's a challenge but it's one that you can overcome it takes a fair bit of hard work but um yeah <laughs> so I guess one of the biggest things is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't 
expect that you're going to get the funding just from one particular place. Uh, something else I saw coming up was uh, needing large sums of money for big projects, so um, and in particular court lighting. Oh, Sam, we're going to run out of time again. Um, <laughs> I think we'll be okay, Sean. You still have 10 minutes. Yeah, let's see. Oh, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Um, so needing large sums for um, lighting for courts. Um, so I'm not too sure which area you're in, but when we were faced with the same problem, we didn't actually get funding for our lights. Uh, initially, we got sponsorship for um, from real estate agents to get some temporary lights put in the fields. Um, and then, of course, we got the assistance from council because we do use community grounds. Um, but there's also other ways, you know, big ticket fundraisers, your silent auctions, golf tournaments, trivia nights. I mean, those are just some quick ideas that I sort of threw together uh, and just hear many hands make light work. Opportunities don't happen. You create them. Man, why does my little arrow not want to work? Um, so when I apply for funding, I always try to have a backup plan. Uh, if it is declined or we only receive a partial payment, can I get away with only buying four hip shields instead of eight hip shields? Um, is there somewhere else I can get it from? Can we run a fundraiser to get the rest of the hip shields we need? Um, can we put an application in somewhere else um, to make up the balance? Um, I guess one piece of advice there was if you are putting in an, an second application um just be transparent as i think carol and samantha mentioned to you know show that you have got partial payments from somewhere else um because funders do tend to talk to each other as well so be transparent be be straight up um be honest so just to recap research research and research some more give yourself plenty of time Make sure you have all of those relevant documents. Don't be afraid to reach out for help and ask questions. Don't let the knockbacks put you off. Find the passion and what drives your organisation and market yourselves. Um, and last but not least, give thanks. So whenever we get a letter through to say that you know we've received a grant um, the first thing I do before replying is go and put the logo up on our website and link it straight back to that trust um, it goes out across social media and newsletters that goes out sort of fortnightly um, and we put them on rugby balls <laughs> we put them on uniforms um, if someone's, I think NZCT gave us money for jerseys toward the end of last year, so they're, they've got space on our jerseys. Um, you know, we got funding for some shorts and socks, so that fund is on our shorts and on our shorts. Um, but yeah, the, the giving thanks I think is probably one of the one of the biggest things for me. Um, and when you do your accountability, send photos of that stuff through because they actually love seeing it and they love seeing the difference that that money has made in the community and to your club. So that's me. Um, I hope some of this has helped you and uh, good luck to you all on your funding journeys.